The First Minister of Scotland will give a press conference on Saturday as she steps up a war of words with London over a second independence referendum. Nicola Sturgeon has been outraged after the Prime Minister said with Brexit on the horizon now is not the time for another vote. For any referendum to be held, Westminster needs to give its approval as it did in 2014. Next week, I will seek the authority of the Scottish Parliament to agree with the UK government the details. Joining me on the line now is Dr Paul Monaghan, who's a Scottish National Party MP. Welcome, Paul. Um, of course, we can talk about the referendum, but first of all, it has to be given permission to actually take place. Do you think that uh, you will get that permission from the UK Parliament? Uh, well, good evening. I think uh, you, are, you raise an interesting question. Uh, Wednesday this week, the Scottish Parliament will have a vote on whether there should be a referendum uh, about independence for Scotland. If the Scottish Parliament votes in favour of a referendum, then the people of Scotland will and must have a referendum. There is no doubt about it, no question. You don't think you'll, you'll meet with any resistance then from Westminster? I think there will be resistance from Westminster, but that is uh, secondary to the will of the Scottish people. If the will of the Scottish people is for another referendum, if they choose to exercise their right to self-determination, then it's inconceivable that Theresa May and the UK government can refuse that request. So I think uh, if on Wednesday there is a vote in favour of that referendum, we will be having one. And I would uh, hope very much indeed that the Scottish Parliament will choose the timing of that referendum also. Let's uh, leap forward now and uh, assume that there is uh, an independence vote that succeeds. NATO Chief Jens Stoltenberg has said this week that an independent Scotland would not automatically become part of the alliance. How do you interpret that? Is that a bit of scaremongering or do you consider it a, a serious concern? Uh, I don't consider that a serious concern. I think the issue is that uh, the UK government is very worried at this point in time of the people of Scotland choosing to take a different path, choosing to protect our economy, choosing to exercise our right to self-determination. The people of Scotland and uh, their politicians, myself included, are not going to sit back idly while the UK government with pulls us out of Europe and destroys our economy. We will fight for our rights to uh, access the European single market and the customs union. These things are very important very important to the people of Scotland. Uh, they're very challenging equally for the UK government and I fully expect the UK government to do everything possible to try to stop that happening. That includes significant scaremongering and uh, significant deployment of tactics that are designed to subvert the will of the Scottish people. So I think the, the, the stuff that we're hearing about NATO today is a sideshow, no more than that. Yeah, understandably, you're, you're most concerned with domestic issues, but there are these, these claims, perhaps scaremongering, scaremongering on an international front. I'm just reading an article titled, The Kremlin-loving SNP cannot be allowed to break our United Kingdom. That's in the Telegraph. And, and there are these claims that another referendum would play into <coughs> Russian hands in particular. Uh, do you consider these statements to have any substance to them? No, I don't consider them to have any substance at all. Uh, I think, and I've said it previously, it's time for the UK government to start showing some respect to the people of Scotland. Uh, it's also time for governments in the West to start showing some respect to governments in the East and vice versa. We need to realise that the world's a relatively small place. The people of Scotland want to be a valued partner, contributing to the, uh, the world in a peaceful way, uh, promoting trade, promoting goodwill, promoting free movement of people, all of the things that are positive and valuable to all of us. Uh, that's our objective, that's what we're fighting very hard for, and that's one of the reasons that the European Union and everything that that stands for is important to us. 
Relationships with the Russian Federation are equally important, and uh, uh, we, we wouldn't never, uh, never wish to underplay that. But uh, the, 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 the real issue here is domestic politics at this particular time, and what Theresa May's action is going to be next uh, in relation to uh, some of the ambiguity that she's introduced to this whole debate around a Scottish referendum. You said there that EU relations are important to Scotland. Uh, what do you make of, of the message coming from the EU that Scotland uh, will have to join a queue to get back in? Although I suppose you're already in that situation that with Brexit, Scotland's going to be out of the EU anyway. No, I don't think that is the case, actually. Um, if Scotland has a referendum before the UK leaves the European Union, my understanding is that there's a very real possibility, and I'm quite confident that this is the way that it will play out, that Scotland's membership of the EU can, can, can continue seamlessly. Uh, again, I think what we're seeing is an element of uh, scaremongering taking place now. Theresa May is determined to try to persuade the people of Scotland that uh, regardless of what happens, the people of Scotland will be leaving the EU. That's not necessarily the case. Uh, we are hearing very warm words from all of the 27 member states in the EU that they will welcome continuing membership of Scotland as a nation uh, because they recognise the contribution that Scotland can make to the European Union. So it's a very positive message that we're hearing in stark contrast to the sort of information that's been put out by, as you've mentioned already, uh, the Telegraph in London. Paul, many thanks for coming on to speak to us. Very interesting uh, interview. Dr Paul Monaghan is my guest, Scottish National Party MP. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you.